STS-60 was the first mission of the U.S. – Russian Shuttle Mir program, which carried Sergei K. Krikalev, the first Russian cosmonaut to fly aboard a space shuttle. The mission used Space Shuttle Discovery, which lifted off from Launch Pad 39A on 3 February 1994 from Kennedy Space Center, Florida. The mission carried the Wake Shield Facility Experiment and a SPACEHAB module into orbit, and carried out a live bi-directional audio and downlink link-up with the cosmonauts aboard the Russian space station Mir. Crew <laughs> <laughs> Topic Mission Highlights After external tank separation and main engine cutoff, a 2.5 minutes ohms burn was initiated at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Standard Time that circularized Discovery's orbit from a 40 by 190 nautical mile 74 by 352 kilometers 219 miles orbit to 190 by 190 nautical miles 353 by 352 kilometers 219 miles Shortly after liftoff pilot Kenneth S Reitler Jr experienced problems with his portable headset The problem was traced to the headset interface unit HIU and that unit was swapped with a flight spare the payload bay doors were opened and around 8.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time the crew was given a go for on-orbit operations. Shortly after reaching orbit, the STS-60 crew began checking Discovery's systems and activating the commercially developed SPACEHAB laboratory module and several of its experiments. The crew also activated one group of the payload bay getaway special experiments. SPACEHAB module experiments that were activated included the organic separations payload, which is designed to investigate cell separation techniques for possible pharmaceutical and biotechnology processing, and the equipment for controlled liquid phase sintering experiment package, a furnace designed to explore the possibilities of creating stronger, lighter and more durable metals for use in bearings cutting tools and electronics. SPACEHAB MIDIC experiments that were activated included Immune 1, which will look at the immune systems of rats in orbit, and the commercial protein crystal growth package, which is attempting to grow large, well-ordered protein crystals so that their structures can be more easily studied. The crew sleep period then began at 6.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. At 6.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on 5 February 1994 Discovery inadvertently flew through a cloud of wastewater ice crystals. Flight controllers determined that approximately one tablespoon of wastewater leaked out of a waste dump nozzle. The Wake Shield facility deployment operation was cancelled on Saturday. This delay was the result of several factors, including radio interference and an inability to read the Wake Shield status lights when the orbiter's payload bay is in full sunlight. Deployment originally was scheduled for 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, but after grappling the free flyer and lifting it out of the cargo bay and into the pre-deploy position, crew members and investigators on the ground were unable to tell whether power and transmitter status lights were giving the proper indications. After determining that the problem was not a systems failure, but difficulty in reading the status lights, the crew and flight controllers prepared for another release attempt. Interference between the radio transmitter on the wake shield facility and the receiver on its payload bay carrier resulted in a one-day delay. 
Wake Shield deployment was also cancelled on Sunday, 6 February 1994 during its Orbit 53 opportunity at 12.25 pm WSF and flight controllers worked on problems with the pitch and roll sensors on WSF's attitude, direction and control system. Astronaut N. Jan Davis moved the wrist joint on the Remote Manipulator System RMS arm to try to point WSF's horizon sensor into the Sun in an attempt to warm up the sensor's electronics package. The last deployment opportunity for Sunday was a 50-minute window beginning at 2.23 Eastern Standard Time on Orbit 54 but WSF was not ready. It was left mounted on the RMS during the crew sleep period while ground controllers considered their options. On its perch at the end of the RMS overnight, WSF was able to grow two gallium arsenide, gallium arsenide thin films. The next deployment opportunity on 7 February 1994 would have been during Orbit 67 but payload controllers and flight controllers determined that there would be insufficient time to safely develop contingency procedures in the event that WSF was unable to maintain stable attitude control without the use of its horizon sensor. It was decided that for the remainder of the mission, all WSF operations would take place at the end of the RMS and there would be no WSF free-flying operations on the mission. On 7 February 1994, work had been progressing in the SPACEHAB module on a number of experiments. These included the three-dimensional microgravity accelerometer 3DMA experiment, astroculture experiment ASC3, Bioserve Pilot Lab BPL, commercial generic bioprocessing apparatus experiment CGBA, commercial protein crystal growth experiment CPCG, controlled liquid phase sintering Eclipse Hab, immune response studies experiment IMM UNEO1 organic separation experiment ORSEP space experiment facility SEF Penn State biomodule PSB and the space acceleration measurement system SAMS experiment Sergey K Krikalev had been operating the SAMS experiment at 7:38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on 2/8 February 1994, Good Morning America performed a live bi-directional audio and downlink video hookup between astronauts on board Discovery and three cosmonauts on board the Soviet space station Mir. Discovery was over the Pacific Ocean and Mir was over the southern United States. Afterwards, work progressed with SPACEHAB module and MIDIC experiments while Wake Shield continued operations at the end of the remote manipulator system. A slight problem developed with the status indicators on the 3DMA experiment and the crew downlinked video to aid in troubleshooting. The astronauts ended flight day 6 at 7:10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Flight Day 7, the 9th of February 1994, began at 3:20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. ODERACS operations were scheduled for 9:55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time during Orbit 97, and BREMSAT deploy was scheduled for 2:50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The WSF experiment was brought to an end and a telemetry problem with the facility prevented the growth of the sixth and final thin film on board WSF. Five other thin films were grown throughout the mission before Wake Shield was birthed. WSF closeout was completed by 8.10 am Eastern Standard Time. 
At 7:58 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Commander Charles F. Bolden reported to the ground that one of the thermal protection system (TPS) blankets around Discovery's forward RCS thruster below Commander Bolden's cabin window was slightly peeled back. N. Jan Davis was directed to halt her power down and stowage of the remote manipulator system RMS arm and use the arm to perform a camera survey of the front left side of the orbiter. At 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the BREMSAT momentum wheel was spun up and BREMSAT was ejected into space at 2.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at the rate of 3.3 feet per second, 1 meter per second. On flight day 8, the 10th of February 1994, the astronauts performed a number of operations to prepare Discovery for its trip home. These included hot fire tests of all 44 reaction control systems jets, flight control system checkout, SAREX stow, CPCG stow, ASC3 deactivation, ORSEP deactivation, stowage of all non-essential cabin items and Ku band antenna stow. Flight Day 9, the 11th of February 1994, operations included the power up of all critical orbiter entry systems, Group B power up, SAMS deactivation, CAPL deactivation, and deorbit preps. Ground controllers gave Discovery a go to start SPACEHAB deactivation at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and this was complete by 8:20 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Landing was at KSC runway 15 at 2:6:41 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Topic. See also. List of human space flights List of Space Shuttle missions Outline of Space Science Space Shuttle External links NASA Mission Summary STS-60 video highlights This article incorporates public domain material from websites or documents of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration.